So I left you off with this example A and B, and I said, take this halogen, add this alkene, and mix it with some palladium, and a coupling reaction will go forward. So can you predict the products? And I gave you the choice, right, because that's what that was. I gave you the choice of answering those examples on your own. All right, so let's kind of double check and let's see if you were able to answer these questions the right way. All right, so let's take A. A, we had something that, oh, let me kind of make it match exactly what you saw on your screen. So let's take a look at that again. All right, so let's make this perfectly match just so I don't confuse you. So we had that halide, this alkene with palladium and blah, blah, blah. All right. So they want to know, if a heck reaction goes forward, what's your product? What do you get? Okay. So as before, as you expect, what am I going to do? Yep, you got that. That's right. There we go. And I'm going to take my eraser. There it goes. This carbon is now going to be here where that halogen was, which means that this is a double bond. And then the rest of the molecule gets adjoined. There you go, folks. That's it. The only thing that you want to watch out for is right here at the moment of join, you just want to make sure that this is a trans. Now, sometimes we've not really focused on that, and that's because, well, depending on what molecule was there and when it was there, you know, this molecule might not show cis and trans, especially if there's two of the same type of group on one of these carbons. It can't show that, but here it was. There were different groups on both of those carbons involved in the double bond, and we can talk about cis and we can talk about trans. This one was already set. All right, let me go back. So the one to the left, this one was already set in stone. That's because that is the orientation that the molecule came to me with. So I can't really do anything with that one. It just so happens to be a trans as well. But I can't really do anything with that one. It's the one that's, um, that's the new one, the one that I'm adding that's the one that I really do want to make sure that I put into the trans notation because that is the preferred, more stable way for these molecules to be. In addition to this, I want to kind of go back and take a look at what's happened here. Look at this double, single, double, cause you trouble kind of thing. There's the delocalization network that has now been added in. So this delocalization network has now stabilized the product. Anytime a molecule can do this, very, very good. But this delocalization also goes up into that oxygen as well. So this is a double, single, double, single, double, and it can go on up into the oxygen. So those electrons can be spread very thin through the molecule, which makes that molecule very, very happy. Again, think of these as your children, and you've had it with them. You don't want anything else to do with them. You set them out in the yard, and you just say, go at it, come back in at 8 o'clock, I'm locking the door. You know, I think that we've all kind of been there sometimes if you've got kids. And if not kids, maybe animals. Maybe you have some dogs in the house. Maybe they've just been ornery all day and they just don't want to listen. They don't want to behave. So you just sit them outside of the backyard and you lock the door. I mean, nobody's going to tattle. Sometimes we need that space, right? All right, so let's take a look at another example, Part B. Part B, they kind of draw, uh, drew a different way. And the reason is because this was a way that they sh were kind of getting across this idea of stereochemistry. All right, so here's what they gave us with our halogen. And we are going to be adding this piece onto it. And again, palladium and blah, blah, blah. Okay. So just like before, I'm going to take my starting material. And it's going to be here. And there's my bromine. And I'm going to take my eraser, there it goes. 
and I'm going to add on this carbon. All right, so there's the carbon that I'm adding on. And that carbon has a double bond, so double bond. And that goes to another carbon and double bond, right? So let me draw these in color so you can kind of keep track. There's the red one, and that's the connector. So the next one is this blue one, and that's going to be here. And the next one will be this pink one, and that's this one. And off of this pink one, folks, I've got a double bond O. All right, so it doesn't really matter how I draw it. There's my double bond O. And then off of that, I also have another carbon. Again, I took kind of the time to make sure that I've added this in the trans notation. Even though this double bond is cis, how do I know that? Well, if you forgot those general chemistry one rules, here's the deal. Here's a carbon, there's a carbon, it's a tie. Here's a carbon, that one runs out, there's no more. So here is one. And then over on this side, I have an invisible bond that goes up to the hydrogen. So this is a carbon and that's a hydrogen. Carbon beats it out and it's all due to atomic numbers. So this double bond is the same side. Those high groups are on the same side of the bond. So therefore, this is a cis and then this one is going to be a trans. My high group is pointed up here, and the high group is pointed down here. So that is a trans notation that I have added on to the compound, and that is something that the heck does do. So stereochemistry, I do have to keep that in mind. So if it was there before, and it was cis, I keep it cis. If it was trans, I keep it trans on the halogen. Whatever was there before, I don't really fool with that. Okay, but it's this new incoming bond, that alkene, that I do have to pay special attention to, and I do want that to be in the trans notation when I can. All right, so let's do some more examples, right? I think that you might be feeling good about these, right? I think that you're working through this and going, I think this is getting easier and easier. You know, lithium and magnesium were kind of tricky because it's the first time that I've seen this stuff. Then it got to the copper, and that copper just basically slapped on the molecule. And then we got to Suzuki, and then that just kind of slapped on the molecule. And then we're getting to heck, and it just really does the same thing. So I think I might be getting used to these organometallics. I hope so. Because that's all that these equations are going to be, folks. That's it. All right, so here's some palladium and blah, blah. Okay, so what do we do? Okay, well, there's that molecule. There's the double bond. So there it goes. And that carbon is going to be attached. I want that in a trans position. And there we go. That's it. There's your heck reaction. You've elongated the chain. That chain elongation has happened, and you have made sure that you have drawn that alkene bond in the trans position when you added it on. That's it. That's all that we're asking you to do with these reactions. Nothing more. All right, so let's take a look at something like this. And blah, blah, blah. All right. Follow the template that was set before. Here is my aryl halide. So that's good. That's what heck needs. There it goes. That now is attached to a carbon. And that carbon has a double bond. And that one goes to a carbon that also has a double bond O that also has a NH2. That's it. Nothing more. I've made sure that this is in the trans position because this one's pointed down and that one's pointed up. They're in different directions. Folks, there's your heck. Let's do another one. Let's do another ring. Just because they look so nasty and mean, we're going to show it who's boss. We're going to get used to these and say, whatever, you don't own me, you don't rule me. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. 
That's how you need to talk to organic sometimes. All right, so here's a reaction. These two things need to come together with palladium and uh, blah, blah, right? And who cares what that is? Triethylamine probably most of the time. Okay, so I'll take this ring structure. There's my bromo. There's my OCH3. And uh, get rid of the halogen. Well, they've drawn this a different way. Where do I connect it? Uh, well, they did this for a reason. They tried to trick you. You need to keep in mind that the alkenes here, the best ones that are going to work in the heck reaction are the terminal ones because we need to take advantage of that hin hindrance, right? And with a terminal alkene, there's very limited hindrance that I need to bring into the picture and worry about because this is at the very end of a molecule. It's a carbon. It just has two hydrogens on it, and that's it. That's always going to be the site of attachment. So every single time that you see these double bonds like this, that is going to be the site of attachment. So that's the carbon that's going to kind of link up with this halogenated benzene ring at this point. All right, so that carbon is what's going to have a double bond, and then that double bond will speed off into a benzene ring. There you go. That's it. So it's exactly what we've always done, except they try to flip that around on us just to try to trick us up a little bit. We just kind of had to orient ourselves, and once we got ourselves oriented of where that double bond attachment's going to be, we just draw the structure, folks, and I've still drawn it in the trans notation, right? So this one's pointed up, and this one's pointed down. So they're in opposite directions, and that is what Heck prefers to do. Again, it's because of the hindrance, and it's because of the stability of those products that get formed. All right, so let's take a look at another. And here we have a benzene ring, and then a da, 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 and a bromo group. And then over here, we'll do a double bond, and a double bond to O, and then that. And here we'll do palladium and blah, blah. Okay, so there we go. So you're going to look at this reaction, and you're going to start off by drawing that reagent. So here is my benzene ring. And then one, two, three, and there's my bromo group. And you're going to come in with an eraser, and you're going to go, blah, 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 and that's what happens. And then I'm going to go, ah, wrong. Huh? What do you mean? That's what we've always done. It is. It is what we've always done. It would have worked here as well. But this template is not really the template that we would need for Suzuki and Heck to go forward. And the reason is because this halogen is right now attached onto a carbon, and that carbon is not vinlic, so there's no double bond on it, and it's not aryl. It's just the normal, oh, run-of-the-mill primary carbon that nobody cares about. So this is not an ideal setup for Suzuki or Heck, and you probably would not get a very good reaction or product yield from this. So this is not good. However, I can fix it. I did it to test you, and it worked. I know that it did. You know, you don't have to lie and fib. I know, I know that I led you down that path, and you were just writing everything down that I was saying, and you didn't question not one thing. But I can fix this if a double bond goes here. Now that carbon's sp2, and now I can boop, boop, right? That bromine group, and that bromine's going to leave. And right here, we have this particular carbon right there. And it is a double bond. And we have a carbon that's attached to another carbon. That is a double bond O. And then that goes on to another carbon. There you go, folks. There's the trans. I had to flip that up a little bit just so that I could draw it as a trans molecule, right? So if you notice, this bond kind of goes up to the right. And this one, to make it trans, where this one's pointed down and this one's pointed up, I had to go kind of in the opposite direction. So just to make this look the right way, I just flip that double bond O up from the down spot, which is perfectly fine. 
Again, if you don't do that on a test, I'm probably not going to slam you with the points. I'm probably not going to get mad and write nasty notes. I'm probably not going to rip up your papers. You know, those are for other instructors. They're not for me. Okay? That's not the way I operate. I think you know that by now, I hope. Especially if you had me for Chemistry 251. All right, so let's take a look at another example problem. What reagents are needed to make these? A and B. And again, we are assuming heck because that's the section that we're working in. So if you had to undergo a HEC template, what reagents would you use in order to get these products that you see on the screen right now? So pause the video. I'm, I'm not done with the video. Just pause it, write down A and B, and see if you can come up with the starting pieces that would be needed to be joined together in a heck reaction to make these products with because that's what the question is asking what two reagents would you bring together and join as matchmaker to make these product babies that you see on the screen all right so pause the video write these down try them and then come back and let's see how you did So chances are you did not pause the video like I told you to and you just waited in a very awkward silence for me to come back and give you the answers. So if that's what you did, let me give you the answers. So for part A, this is the product. We need to make that product. And we need to use the heck reaction in order to make that product with. Well, I know that I need something with a bromine on it some type of halogen, and this needs to be Vinlic or Aryl, preferably, just like Suzuki. The other piece, I know that I have to have a carbon double bond carbon, some form, some wear, some how. And these are the two areas that I begin to look for. Okay, so let me make this easy for you. I look at compound A. And I see a double bond here. So this is a Vinlic carbon right there. And I also see a double bond here, which could mean that I could cut that molecule down in half. And I will end up with a carbon, carbon, double bond carbon that goes out to my halogen piece. That's Vinlic. That works. And then this side is the carbon-carbon double bond. And then the remaining of that piece is the double bond that I would be after. And of course, in each one of these, palladium on the arrow, and then the blah, 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 uh, every, uh, for the every solvent that comes along. So if I wanted to be proper, CH2CH33 with a nitrogen triethylamine. Guys, that's it. Again, very easy, very simplistic in nature. That's how you do it. Chop the molecule in half. It'll probably scream when you do, but it will be okay. B. Let's take a look at it. Again, these are the things I need to keep in mind. Double bond and then another Vinlic or air roll with a halogen on it. Okay, so I see a double bond here, so I can go, there we go, and this gives me the first half, which is right there, and off of this, I can maybe put the halogen group, and that is going to react with a carbon double bond carbon, and then off of that carbon is another carbon that has a C triple bond in. Folks, that's it. There we go. Here is the aryl halide that the heck reaction needs. And then here is the alkene that the heck reaction also demands. Was that hard? I don't think it was. Let's look at another. Here are the same type of questions. What reactants are needed for A and B for this molecule to be formed? Okay, just use what we just did. We're learning. I mean, that's a part of this process, right? So I'm going to come in and I'm going to search through the molecule and I see a double bond right here. So why not just go, there we go. 
Let's try it. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. We have an eraser. Okay, so that bond has to go to something, and what that would go to would be a halogen. And that halogen is a Vinlick halogen. It is on a carbon that has an sp2 on it. So there we go. There's it. Plus, and this piece is a carbon-carbon double bond, and it seems like they love to use these, don't they? I mean, it just it's a pop up all the time. But there is the alkene that would be needed for the Heck reaction. And once more, palladium goes in, and also the triethylamine for the most part. That is the uh, preferred solvent that they like to use for these. There we go. There's our two pieces. Not a big deal. All right. Let's look at B. We'll do the same thing here. I'll look through the molecule. Look, there's a double bond. Let's cut it here. There we go. So this molecule to the left-hand side, and that has to go to something. So let's put a bromo there. Does that meet the criteria? That bromo is on a benzene ring that is an aryl halide. Yes, ding, ding, it works. And then here is a carbon-carbon double bond, and then that will eventually go to the ring system. That is delocalized. And there's my two pieces. So in the heck reaction, the bromo leaves, the carbon double bond goes on to that place, and that undergoes with a palladium catalyst that is in triethylamine solvent. Again, I told you, these are not hard. And the nice thing about these is that I don't have to show mechanisms because we just don't know about them. We know that they happen, but we don't know the details. So here's a different type of question. A and B. Show how Suzuki and Heck can make the following. Oh, now they're mixing it. I see where they're going with this. So they're giving me a product A and they're giving me product B. And they want to know, make it using Suzuki, make it using Heck. How can we get to that point? And then they want me to do B the same way. So this is where I'm going to leave you. So write down A, write down B. Take a stab at it. I think A is going to be a little bit easier for you than B will be. But take a stab at it and then see what you get. And I think that you might actually surprise yourself. So Suzuki, A for B, and then heck for A and B. Good luck. When you get ready and you think you have the answer, hit play on the next video and we'll see how well you did. Don't worry, nobody will know and I won't tell.